Hey everyone, welcome back to Susan Sunday Spotlight. This week I have another fast-paced card game for you. If you liked the game Snap from a few weeks ago, I think you'll also like this one. Uh, this game is called Spoons. Spoons is another fast-paced card game, so students will get to use a deck of cards, which is pretty simple to grab, so I love that as a teacher, and students will be able to look for the matching numbers. That is their goal. Their goal is to get four of the same number in their hand at one time, and it's very quick moving. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to play Spoons with a regular deck of cards, and I'll also show you a little academic spin on it towards the end. So let's see how to play. pretty sure Spoons is pretty popular. Um, I used to play this back in my old days when I went to the cabin as a kid and we would play Spoons. It was fast paced, it was fun, I kind of loved it. So some of your students might already know how to play this game, but if not it's a fun one to teach. So all you need to play this game is a deck of cards and some spoons. I just grabbed some cheap plastic ones at the store. They're easy to have in the classroom anyway and that's that. So when playing Spoons, you will want um, probably about three to four students in a group, and you will want one less spoon than there are players. So if you have four players, you want three spoons. If you have three players, you want two spoons, just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip the camera and I will show you how to play this fast-paced game. And even though I love this game just as it is with a simple deck of cards, I will also give you a couple other ways that you can use this in your classroom. So let's see how to play. Okay, so shown below, there are four players in this game, as you can see, player one, two, three, and four. And because of that, there are only three spoons in the middle. So each student will start with four cards. And again, their goal is to try to collect four of the same exact card. So in the case of a deck of cards, they're trying to get four of the same number or face card to get a match. So this student right here will be the dealer. They start with the deck of cards. And after everybody's been handed their four cards, they will start the game. Um, each person will have their cards hidden. I'm just doing this face up so you can see. Students will flip a card and they will decide if they want to keep it in their hand or if they want to pass it. So since there's no other six, the student will probably pass their card and they'll put it right here next to this player. Then they'll flip a new card. As I am flipping a new card, oh, a five. I see a five matches. I'll probably want to keep that and switch one of my own cards. So I'll put this here and pass this to the pile. This pile here is what's going around. So this student will go ahead, flip over their cards, decide if they want to keep it, and if not, they'll put it here and pass it to this player. And it just keeps going around. By the time it gets over here, they don't add it back to the top deck of cards, they will actually add it. Let's pretend they already did it and looked and they didn't want this card. They'll add it to a discard pile over to the side. 10, flip, pass so on and so forth. Students will continue to go around. Now if by any chance no students get four of a kind as they kept going around and the discard pile has you know gotten all filled up, you will go ahead and shuffle this pile and reuse it until it happens. That doesn't happen that often. What's much more likely is that a student will get four of the same card. So let's pretend the student got four fives right here in their hand. They can choose whether to grab a spoon from the middle kind of stealthily and quietly or they can just grab it real fast. Once this happens, you don't want to be the last one to grab a spoon. You don't want there to be no spoons left. Sometimes people like to do it sneakily because people are so into their cards they don't know what's happening. And then when they can, they look over, so and so has theirs, so and so has theirs, and they might be the last person without a spoon. Once that happens, you can kind of do one of two things. That player can just be out, and you can reshuffle and do it again with three players and only two spoons in the middle. Or you can play the classic way, which is the person that's out collects an S. And I'll go ahead and insert a little picture of that. And basically that just is the first letter in the word spoons. And you'll play so many times that you will have to see which player gets spoons first and that player is out. And then you go down to the next. And so it's the last one standing basically. When I played in my first grade classroom, I liked to play it so the last person to grab a spoon would actually be out. So if there were no spoons left, rather, they would be out of the game and then students would continue on. They were still there watching the whole time. And that way, once you had a winner at the very end, students could just reshuffle all the cards and play together as a group. Since it's so fast moving, they usually got to play two or three times. But that part is up to you. 
For kindergarten and first grade, this is already such a great number sense game, getting students to quickly identify those numbers and match them up. Um, but there are some other ways that you could use this in your classroom as well, and one of the ways I like to use it is for phonics patterns. So, for instance, for CVC words, I like the kind of added aspect of instead of just identifying the numbers on the cards, I like the added aspect of reading the cards to be able to decode the words. So if you wanted to do CVC words, what I've done in the past is I have like the word web, for instance, I will do a lowercase one, and you could, I guess, just go ahead and have a bunch of lowercase words that all match, but again, I wanted to add a little bit more to that, so I'll have a lowercase word web, an uppercase word web, just to get them um, used to different types of print, I guess, um, and then I'll have two different pictures of a web as well. So as they are going around and playing the game, they are having to read the word, look at the picture quickly, and make sure that they all match. So again, here's one, the word six, 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 and I guess that would work for numbers as well as CVC words. Just like with a deck of cards, if you're using something else, you'll still want around 50 to 52 cards so students can pass them around quickly and there's enough for everybody. Most of the ideas that I actually used in the game Snap will also work here. So you could again do this with letter identification, number identification with the actual cards, but you could add in some more like tens frames or tally marks or different ways to show those numbers to make it a little trickier. Um, you could also use rhyming words. So instead of students just needing to find matching CVC words, they need to have four rhyming words in their hands. You could definitely do this with place value. You could have a two digit number and then you could have an expanded form. You could list out the tens and ones and you could also show it with base 10 blocks. So this game would probably go a little slower. The more difficult the skill, the slower it will go, but that's totally fine. Again, it's up to that kind of the dealer um, to start with the card and then everyone can go at their own pace. So there's no kind of rush for it. So that's how you play the game Spoons. Just as it is, it's a very fun uh, like indoor recess game or number sense game at the beginning of the year in first grade or kindergarten, and students just tend to like it. If you find that your class is really enjoying it, go ahead and add those other harder skills so that way they can practice playing it as well. The CVC cards that I showed you before, I actually have these in my TPT store, which I will link below. Again, you can totally play this game just as it is with a regular deck of cards, but in case you wanted to put a little spin on it, I have those for you. As always, if you like this video and this game, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up and make sure you hit subscribe down below. When you hit subscribe, you're able to see my YouTube videos kind of pop up on your newsfeed when you're on YouTube, but if you actually click that bell down below, you will get an email every single time I upload right away, so you will never miss one. I'll see you next week. Bye. That is pretty similar to... No. It's not similar. Let's try again.